once again, welcome to the program, Your Local Government. I'm Bob Miller with Blue Ridge Communications, and this is the program where we discover what's happening in your local government. And our guest today is uh, Representative Mindy Fee from the 37th District, uh, Pennsylvania House. And uh, Mindy, thank you again for being with us. Oh, thanks for having me. I appreciate the opportunity. We've kind of lost uh, track of time. How long have <laughs> you been in the House now? Oh. Uh, I am f in my first term, so mm -hmm. I'm in the second year of my first term. Okay. And all is going well? Well, yeah, so far. <laughs> you know, there's days, but so far. <laughs> Absolutely. I'm sure... Uh, uh, there's a lot of uh, issues going on, a lot of different opinions, and it's a whole uh, new world after coming out of the uh, private industry sector. It was so. a very eye-opening process, I'm yes. Sure. <laughs> I'm sure. We've devoted this entire first segment to property tax reform. Mm -hmm. For me on this program, it seems like we've been talking about this for the last 10 years that we've been doing this show, and virtually nothing has, has happened. So once again, uh, it's being looked at, as everyone knows, that uh, schools are primarily funded through property taxes, uh, which is stable for the schools, but on the other hand, uh, somewhat of an uneven basis. Sometimes the elderly having a hard time uh, keep it, keeping their homes because of that. So uh, there's a few things floating around out there to, uh, to look at this once again. So walk us through what are the bills that are being proposed and uh, how do they differ and any that you might be weighing in on that you think might be best. Sure, absolutely. Um, well, let me stay first off, property taxes is the number one issue in my office. It's the issue that people talk about the most, email me the most, or phone call. <laughs> um, so people are concerned. Um, we actually did have movement on a bill that I'll go into a little bit later in the House. Um, but the problem, I'll, I'll talk about some of the issues with property taxes, why I don't see it moving along the way it should move along, the way we think in Lancaster County it should move along. Property taxes is not a partisan issue. It's not a Democrat issue. It's not a Republican issue. It's a region uh, issue. So there are areas across our state that have no problems at all with property taxes. I mean, you go up to Center County and somebody had a, a home up there that was in my office and they paid $600 in property taxes. We in Lancaster County have a whole different feel to what we believe uh, uh, needs to be done. So, Help us understand why would a property up in Center County have such low property taxes? Well, there's two, there's two things that I think we need to do. You know, I always look for a way People talk about, you know, you need to fight this issue, fight this issue. Well, with the property taxes, standing up and hollering about property taxes, I don't believe it's going to fix property taxes. There's two other issues that I absolutely feel we need to fix before we can fix property taxes. One is the pensions. We need to fix pensions because the higher our pension uh, deficit goes, the unfunded liability, the more our school districts are going to have to raise revenue to help fund the pension process, and the more our property taxes are going to keep skyrocketing. So that's number one that absolutely must be fixed. The other one is the way that the state funds the schools. Out of property taxes, there's about $14 billion a year raised from real estate taxes um, that fund our schools. The state's portion is about $10 billion. So our total budget up at the state house is roughly 29 billion. Um, so out of that, 10, 10 billion goes to pro, uh, our schools to help fund our schools. Um, the two bills that were voted on within the house is uh, the first was House Bill 1189. It was from Representative Seth Grove out of York, and what that did is. Um, that passed, it passed with 149 votes out of the House. It's over in the Senate as we speak. But what that did is it still kept the money on a local level, but it gave school districts the ability to change the way they get their funding to help fund their schools. You know, I always tell, I always tell my constituents, everybody wants me to eliminate property taxes, but the bottom line is you don't eliminate the tax. We have to fund our schools. It has to be shifted. It, have to be, it has to be shifted. So to me, that word elimination is kind of a little play on words because we're going to pay for our school districts. But um, it takes them to be able to, with 1189, a school district can use a merchant style tax, a business tax, a uh, personal income tax, and they can fluctuate depending on what best suits that school district. And that money stays local. So that got 149 votes out of the House over in the Senate. But part of that bill was, and I voted for that, as a matter of fact, the entire Republican 
delegation voted for that. Um, on that bill, they put an amendment, which was House Bill 76, which is the one that everybody hears about, talks about. That's the bill that eliminates the property taxes, but shifts it to a sales, sales tax. So you raise the sales tax from six to 7%, mm -hmm. and many more goods and services become taxed. Sure. And that would be statewide, not by district. That's statewide. Mm -hmm. And it also increases personal income tax from 3.07 to 4.01. Um, that was voted on the House floor, and that ended up getting only 59 votes. Mm -hmm. You need 102 votes to get something passed in the House. So it came up very short. Um, we I again, go ahead, say, sure. Probably the, the people, the businesses that would have been impacted by that sales tax probably lobbied hard against it, I would supposition. Um, I'm sure they did. M Part of the biggest issue, and by the way, I voted for that. I'll vote for anything right now to get things moving to help fix our property taxes. Again, mm -hmm. we have a great uh, a great problem in Lancaster County with it. But um, part of the problem is you can see with the state portion, with $14 billion coming from property taxes, out of a $29 billion budget, mm -hmm. that's hard to make up with mm -hmm. just heading sa sales tax sure. up 1% exactly. and without starting to tax everything. So um, I, I believe, again, to go back to it, there are two things that we have to do. We have to fix our pensions and we have to fix our school funding formula. Mm -hmm. Well, let's talk about the, the pensions a little bit. It's, it's a real dilemma because it was under the Republican Ridge administration. Stock market was doing well. It was. Uh, surplus money. Mm -hmm. So they decided to raid the, raid the piggy bank, so to speak, and give everybody these horrific uh, pension increases, uh, sometimes up to 50%, and telling everyone that uh, all is well, we won't have to raise taxes to do it. Unbelievable. Uh, the economy tanked, and now there's shortfalls. And when, when you look at those pension numbers, they are Staggering. They are staggering. And, Fifty billion unfunded liability. Right. And the dilemma is that these people were promised this, and uh, you know, contract law states that once you promised it, you you deliver. So, what ideas do you have on how to fix this problem? There doesn't seem to be an easy one ahead of us. Well, my favorite one is Senator Brubaker's, and his his actually does a couple things. His uh, increases the top. You know, the way you you. Uh, I'll do it very simple terms. Uh, determine your your uh, benefit package is your top three years of salary times the number of years of service times a multiplier that originally was 2.0. Uh, back when they did the pay raise, they bumped it to 2.5. But they didn't just bump it from that day going forward, they bumped it retroactive from the day you started. So, you know, if you had 29 years of service or 21 years of service or 15 years of service, you just got a pay raise for all those years of service. Um, his wants to move the multiplier back to a 2.0. It was also the governor's proposal, and that's not getting a whole lot of uh, support. Mm -hmm. The main reason, they say, is it's not constitutional. I don't quite understand personally why it's constitutional to bump, you know, from 2.0 to a 2.5 when we did a pay raise and do it retroactive, and now to move back to a 2-0, that's unconstitutional. So, right now, uh, three different House members had different bills out there. They kind of sat down together and came up with a consensus. Um, I didn't see the final bill yet. Hopefully, when we go back the beginning of June, uh, we're going to really dig into it. Again, we as a delegation in Lancaster County got called into the leader's office, and they said, what's the most important issue to mm -hmm. you? We said pension reform. We sure. must fix it. Well, I'm sure the teachers union and others would file lawsuits if you try to do that, and I guess that's part of the fear. And then also politically losing the support of the teachers. Yeah, absolutely. Well, and that plays into it. So the, the new bill is actually Representative Tobash's bill out there. Um, but from what I'm hearing, it is going to be for new employees only. So it doesn't touch any existing employees. It does not touch any retired mm -hmm. folks. It's for only new employees. And it, up to 50000 it will stay a defined benefit. And over 50000 it will become a 401k type yeah, no, package. That sounds good. But isn't that the proverbial squirt gun on the forest fire? <laughs> well, that, that's why I would love to vote yeah. <laughs> Senator Brubaker's bill. Yeah. But, uh, you know... As a, uh, as a legislator, we can vote what's in front of us, yeah. and, and, you know, I would love it. As a matter of fact, I was there before we uh, 
left uh, uh, two or three weeks ago and I had a conversation with Representative Tobash because they're batting this all back and forth and I said what's taking so long you know we've been talking about this since I came in to office mm -hmm. why can't we you know vote this and he said well there's things to be worked out you know right. you know do we include the state police do they not be included so there's there's details fine details in there that you have to get a consensus on yes okay it's time for a break and we'll be right back after these few words stay with us and welcome back to your local government. Again, our guest is Representative Mindy Fee, 37th uh, District, Pennsylvania House. And our first segment was based upon the uh, ever complicated uh, property tax. Uh, before we move on to the next subject, you had a few thoughts on education funding formulas. Uh, tell us about those. Um, I do. I, I talked about some of the problems, why we can't get property tax reform uh, accomplished. And, you know, the pensions are one of them. The second piece of it is funding formula. Um, the way that the schools get the money allocated from the state, the $10 billion. And to me, you know, it's a very complicated formula. But one piece of it that makes absolutely zero sense to me is um, the school, the money follows the school district and not the pupil necessarily. So there are school districts that are losing population and yet um, getting, you know, if they got this much funding last year, they're going to get this much, and if we increase it, plus 3% this year. So as you uh, go down to the student level, there are kids in the uh, in Pennsylvania that are getting $900 of state funding mm -hmm. uh, from, the, from the Harrisburg. And then we in Lancaster maybe get 6000 depending on the district. But there's other districts that get 13000 hmm. from the state. Wow. So the funding formula varies greatly. And, and that piece of the puzzle needs fixed. Uh, Bernie O'Neill, Representative O'Neill, had a uh, bill that we all voted on just to start a study from it. But it absolutely needs uh, an in-depth look. So mm -hmm. I'm hoping that will take place. Sure. You know, when the Founding Fathers uh, created the legislature, there's a lot of wisdom, that there's lots of checks and balances, mm -hmm. so that things can't fly through too quickly, but all things are in balance, and sometimes people are thinking, we just can't get anything done. Mm -hmm. uh, there's been particular concern among uh, fiscal conservatives and others that we, we had, uh, you know, both houses Republican, the governor Republican, and uh, under those scenarios, there shouldn't be the kind of gridlock. And, and many people that are you know, very supportive of Republicans are saying, what happened to you guys? You had the power, you had the control, and you didn't deliver. So right. your, your perspective on that, Mindy? Well, I gotta tell you, I'm one of those people. You know, I, I was sitting on the outside a year and a half ago, and I'd say the exact same thing. So when I came to Harrisburg, I thought, okay, you know, we control the House, we control the Senate, we got the governor, let's go. We can get our conservative uh, legislation, move forward. Should be easy. Yeah, it's not so easy. Because <laughs> again, you know, the, the issue is to get anything moved in the House, that board has to hit 102 votes. The numbers are 102, 26, and 1. You know, you got to get 102 in the House, 26 in the Senate votes, and, you know, the governor has to sign off on it. But the fact is, and I, I again, I learned this very quickly as I talked with legislators, met legislators, is Pennsylvania is a very diverse area. So we in Lancaster County have a view of what a Republican should be. There are other areas within the state where Republicans hold the seat, but their constituents don't quite feel like Lancaster County feels. Mm -hmm. So maybe they're a very big union area. Um, so when they go to take a vote, you know, I have to vote for 63,000 constituents. I don't vote for Mindy Fee, I vote for my district. As do those uh, legislators. So if it's a union issue or, you know, they have to vote what their district says. Um, and the political problem with it is oftentimes if they're not there and they would take that hard line vote, there would be uh, a Democrat in that seat come mm -hmm. next election. Sure. And we would lose the majority. And you have to have the majority to be able to run the legislation that mm -hmm. comes with you. Sure. I mean, in, in a two year period, in one term, there's 5,000 pieces of legislation mm -hmm. introduced, 5,000 bills. Um, we end up passing about 300 into law from a session period. So it is very important that we find the legislation that is important to we in Lancaster County mm -hmm. and work on that. And we do that as a delegation. I mean, it's critical. Um, 
with 5,000 pieces, it's hard to, you know, know mm -hmm. and understand every piece. So one of the things that we did as a delegation is we sat down and we made sure with, there's 23 uh, different committees in the House, that we each were on different committees because that's where you hear the first vetting of a bill, you hear hearings on it, you get the facts about it. So, you know, if there is a piece that comes before me on education, I'm not on that committee, mm -hmm. I'll go to Ryan Allman and I'll say, hey Ryan, you know, what's going on with this? How do you feel about it? I'll go to health, because Brian Cutler sits on health. But it's, it's important that you work collectively like that as mm -hmm. we try and make our way to find the correct legislation to be passing. Sure. You brought up a very good point. And, and it seems, in, in my mind, in, in recent history, we've not seen both parties, both the Republican and the Democrat, having two fractions. Uh, you know, there's the conservatives, and then there's the more moderate Republicans, and even in the Democratic wing, there's the blue dog Democrats, and then the, you know, the extreme liberal side, and sure. both parties seem to be at war with themselves, and uh, yeah, that's an interesting be, phenomenon. They can be, yes. yeah. And you know, I am a big believer of sometimes you work together mm -hmm. with the Democrats or the Republicans to find a common ground. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, that's important because if you want to get legislation moving and pass, sometimes you get 60 percent there. You don't get 100 percent right. of what you want, but if you can get 60 percent, you take that mm -hmm. and you get to the next bill. So, we'll see. Yeah, I, I'm sure you're making a good point that the people who represent Philadelphia or Pittsburgh don't have too much in common with the people in Center County or even Lancaster County. No, I said if we could all vote like we think in Lancaster County, boy, we could do some really <laughs> great things, but that's my thought. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Uh, you're, uh, you were uh, proposed some legislation, House Bill 1980, that repeals Act 261 of 1941, Pennsylvania's Employment Agency Law sometimes known as Peel. Quite right. frankly, I never even heard <laughs> about it. So uh, tell us what that was and why that was important and why you were able to push that through. Absolutely. Well, this, these are the little pockets of government that makes me crazy, you know, because you did something one way for so long, you know, sometimes it's just not necessary anymore. And it's a fine way to save some money mm -hmm. uh, within government to do away with it. So I was working with labor and industry on a, uh, on a constituent issue and I had a conversation and this came up. Um, and what, what it was is employment agencies that used to charge a fee to the client to help find a job, um, they used to have to be licensed within mm -hmm. labor and industry. Well, the fact is, most people don't find jobs like that anymore. Mm -hmm. You know, you have monster.com, you do it online, or you do it through an agency like Manpower that, you know, no longer charges you fees. So within this agency, there was only about 60 applicants for licenses anymore. Mm -hmm. um, so they raised revenue about $23,000. Meanwhile, it was costing the agency about $109,000 to even keep it in place. Mm -hmm. So there was... I, I think it ended up being about $86,000 that was being wasted every year. So I said, well, let me get it. If all it takes is a vote in the House, a vote in the Senate, and get the si se governor to sign off on that, and we can save a simple $86,000, mm -hmm. it's worth that to be done. Sure. I, uh, I, so I went before the committee, and one of the gentlemen from the other side came up to me, and he said, Mindy, what are you doing? He said, this state is a billion dollars short in its budgets this year, and you're worried about $86,000. Mm -hmm. And I said, excuse me, sir, uh, with all due respect, you have to do pennies to get to dollars. Mm -hmm. You have to save them. So to me, I'm pleased. And, you know, I want to keep finding those pockets of government that are mm -hmm. just not necessary and costing us money. Okay, well, good so job. So simple. All mm -hmm. right, it's time for another break, and we'll be right back after these few words. Stay with us. And welcome back to the final segment uh, with Representative Mindy Fee, 37th uh, Pennsylvania House. And again, Mindy, so uh, thankful you came to speak with mm -hmm. us today and uh, sharing some of your uh, your wisdom. One of the other areas we're looking at is ways to reduce the burden of, uh, of prisons. Now, I know this is a, a work in progress, and we might do a future show when you come back and give us some of your findings. But sure. what piqued your interest in this? Why is this important to look at? Um, to me, it's because it's 9% of our budget. It's a big portion of our budget uh, that we spend on corrections. So how we can fine tune that, how we can help that process uh, be less money is very important. I mean, we need to keep our citizens safe. That is government's job. But along the way, um, we might be able to fine tune it and help with those costs. 
I, uh, I had was at a meeting the other day and even on a local level uh, one of the commissioners was standing up talking about the prison population in Lancaster County and he said 40 percent of our prison population in Lancaster County right now is on probation violations. Mm -hmm. It could be as simple as didn't show for an appointment or some may have uh, uh, reoffended during their probation time. But I've been out, I've been trying to speak to uh, corrections, I went to the parole office and, and I went to um, one of our local independent uh, parole offices that checks up on parolees in Lancaster County and toured their facilities to see what they're doing. So I think it's a very important issue. So I will mm -hmm. keep you updated as we dig more into that. Yes. Uh please do and recidivism is high and uh, is high. Uh, the whole thing needs to be looked at and evaluated and find ways to make these productive citizens rather than just warehousing them Absolutely. for it's a very long periods issue. of time. Yes, mm -hmm. you know I'm amazed at how many people jump up and down about property taxes but don't realize how much money we're spending on inmates. A lot. And uh, one analogy I heard one time is if you think education is expensive uh, look at what it takes to, to jail someone. So, Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Uh, many of the candidates running for Democratic governor proposing taxes on fracking mm -hmm. uh, and also increasing the minimum wage. And of course it's an easy target that here's somebody making money, you know, let's go milk this cow and see what we can get out of it. Uh, Absolutely. And of course everyone should pay their fair share, but where, where are you coming in on, uh, you know, going after fracking as uh, the solution to the state's uh, financial woes? Well, it's funny, and it has been talked about quite a bit with those candidates, and, and you know, it, it is a target. I, the, I've heard people want to go after fracking, you know, to pay for our education, to pay for our unfunded liability, to pay for our shortfall in our budget this year. Now, I'm not quite sure where you're getting all those different avenues of money out of it, but, um, and, and the numbers fluctuate. It was almost like a bidding war with the Democrat candidates who were running for governor. You know, I heard 2% up to 10% as a, uh, as an extraction tax and where we should be. But, you know, first of all, I always say we are very blessed to have Marcella Shale here in Pennsylvania. You know, if we can become energy independent, not only in Pennsylvania, but in the nation, you know, that would be a fantastic thing. Mm -hmm. um, now, we need to do it in a very responsible way. Uh, so that's important. Mm -hmm. But some of the facts, I'm going to actually put on my glasses so I make sure I get some of these facts right. But, you know, over 30,000 jobs have been created with the core industry of Marcella Shale, of which the average salary, salary was $84,000. Wow. I mean, absolutely great salaries coming from this industry. There's over 200,000 indirect jobs with this industry. So it is generating revenue for the state even if we didn't tax an extraction at all. Absolutely. Since 2008, there's been $2.1 billion in taxes that have been brought in. Uh, in just 2013 alone, there's 264 million in corporate sales and employee withholding taxes. Mm -hmm. So there's money, a lot of money being generated. I mean, we have 9.9 percent of corporate tax. It's the highest tax in the nation. So as everybody tries to compare the way that we decided to tax the drilling industry compared to other states, you have to look at everything involved with it. Um, First of all, there's been $630 million since 200, 2012 just from the impact fee alone. Mm -hmm. And to me, the impact fee makes sense. It, the money stays where the areas are most impacted yes. for their infrastructure, for environmental reasons, for security reasons. And I like that. I like less money coming up to Harrisburg and more money uh, staying locally. Plus it impacts uh, different businesses. We have the Weiler Brush Company, and I heard this story, it's a great story, I'll try and be brief, but they were ready to lay off 40 employees. So the owner of the Weiler Brush Company de designed a brush to be able to use within the pipelines. Mm -hmm. They not only didn't lay off 40 people, they hired more, but they needed wire for their wire brushes. So they went to Mount Joy Wire Company right here in the 37th district. Mm -hmm. They make the wire for the brushes. So it is impacted across the United States, I mean across PA. Sure, uh, ran out of time. We'll give you a close chance for uh, closing comments. Sure, I just saw, I want everybody to realize again, my different outreaches are very important to me uh, to hear from the people in the district. Uh, I have Facebook that I would love to have you follow. Uh, my webpage, Rep Fee, lets you know what we're voting up on, uh, voting on up at the Capitol. So I'm a big communicator. I think it's important for the constituents in the district to know what I'm doing and for me to know what their thought process is in return. So I always have an open door policy. 
Um, and one of the other things I always do is my veterans. I, I bring in a veteran assistant twice a month into my district offices, so Excellent. please call. Well, keep up the good work. Sounds like you're having fun. <laughs> Thanks. And that's going to do it for this program. Join us again next time to learn about your local government.